Good morning. Ready to ride. What's up, Liam? Let's ride some bikes. What's good, J-Bank? I watched your uh, I watched your latest video, and uh, I think I've had I've had many many days like that too, and uh, yeah, what's good, Ross? Man, those days can be so frustrating, but I feel like you gotta go through that to, you know. Sometimes you gotta go through that to get to the point where you're trying to get to. You know that whole. Uh, practice makes progress thing is not it's none of this stuff is linear you know what's good Mazel what's good stoked you're here dabble what's good um, J Bank one of the things I was thinking about too I had a, I had a couple notes but I think one other thing and you could probably do this no problem but you know you're working on you're working on hopping around and in a, a single point, but, uh, hola, Rodrigo. <laughs> uh, so, um, one of the things you might think about is, uh, instead of just hopping on that one single point, trying to move your back wheel around, you might also go back to hopping in a circle because that's a big point where you start to get that inflection with your hips is when you're just hopping around, like kind of pedal kicking in a circle. Um, but uh, we can practice that today too, because that's a big, that's a huge, huge help, I think. Um, yeah. But the hips are, yeah. <clears throat> that's a huge part of it. And then uh, the other thing I was seeing is like, when you were diving down to that 90 degree, when you're going back wheel to 90, you were still pretty far in the back seat. And uh, when I do it, I think I'm a bit more like over the front, like fully committed to diving the front end. Uh, I don't know if that really necessarily is that big of a deal. I mean, it'll make it easier for you, but it also like my hips have to move forward in that case to like push the front wheel down. Morning, mom. Um, so I don't know, maybe that, that also helps like when you're there. You're also having kind of a state change with. You're kind of over the, over that front wheel and like whoosh, really diving in. Maybe it doesn't make too much difference in the actual thing, but yeah. If it's any consolation, up until Tuesday, when you guys asked me to do it, I don't think I'd ever gone weak side with it ever. <laughs> so, cause it is weird because you're, uh, you're going opposite your back foot. So normally when you do it the, the strong way, your back foot is pushing that back wheel into place. And so without that one element, like you're relying on a lot of other bits of your technique to actually get it to move in that direction. Like the back foot on the rear triangle is such a key element to moving your back wheel around and yeah when you remove that that entire bit it's like yeah <clears throat> but uh yeah doing the doing the cross on your back wheel make i think that's like i think that's the way i kind of taught it on the video too where it was like you hop in a big circle and then you make it tighter and tighter and tighter until you're doing it in in one uh in one place that seems to be the way everything, you know, do it big and then tighten it up. Just get a little warm up on it.
mentality there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what's good, Ross? We got double Rosses today. That's sick. Finally starting to feel better. <clears throat> Liam, what should we learn? What should we work on? I'm I'm down for whatever what's good with us. Wait, are you doing the uh are you doing the Damon uh Damon's power whatever thing too? Are you lifting heavy? I saw you had a twenty pound weight vest on. Or 20 kilogram, I guess. I'm two sessions in of lifting with Damon. And uh, I don't feel as beat up as I thought I was going to. Like the first day of, of doing Damon's uh, weight program, I was just nuked. And then yesterday, I actually felt better after lifting a bunch of heavy stuff. But uh, I'm after. Dude, that was so crazy. That was such a cool idea though. Like that was, that was really dope. <laughs> I wonder like, no leg pro. <laughs> I've just decided that, I mean, basically the things that I actually want out of my riding are to be able to to side hop that high and to gap that far. And if I could take any one rider's abilities, I would want to take what Damon has for myself. And so it's an area that I've never really explored either. So he thinks that I could probably add 10 centimeters to my side hop. I'm down to find out. Like if I can do that in a handful of months, it's totally worth it. But, uh, that's cool. That'd be sweet to see you throw bar spins in the mix. <clears throat> All right, I need a bit more warm up on. make a video about it too at some point of lifting heavy and seeing the results. I kind of think of it like a video game character where you have like the technique maxed out but the strength is super low and uh, like spent all this time focusing in on technique you know. And uh, now it's time to add in like the power and all that stuff. I wonder if I could do, J-Bank, I want to try one thing real quick. I don't know if I have enough room to do it in here, but I think so. Let's find out. There was this move that made it pretty easy to work on up to front on the I used to do it on the mod bike where you do like a three pedal and then jump from there up to front wheel. I think I can do it on this bike, but I haven't tried it yet. So we're going to find out together. <laughs> I guess I can do it. It's such a weird, it's such a different feeling because the mod bike was so much lower and longer. It made it so much easier to jump up that way. Let me give that another go. 
rare to be jumping into something and not really knowing what's going to happen. <laughs> too far back. Why am I blowing it? I'm trying to think about... Sure, we can use some gaps. I'm trying to think about the best next step and I'm probably overthinking it of what to do. But the wheel swap thing is so, is so vital, but it's so hard to, something you really gotta dial in before you really start throwing it down. Play with some gaps. <laughs> Is that the real luch? Um, hold on, I'm gonna mute for a second while I move all this stuff around. Luch, like like Top Gun luch, the real deal. All right, Liam. Here we go. Let's do some. Uh, let's do some gaps. You can start off mellow. And <laughs> Thanks, Luch. Uh, we'll start out mellow and work through a couple different ways to gap. Start with a pedal, uh, pedal kick gap first. A little warm up. <laughs> Feeling clumsy today. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. Okay, so the biggest thing when it comes to getting further on gaps, well, there's two ways to do it. We'll talk. So, the biggest thing I've found is sort of a combination of two things. But it starts with dropping your front wheel down pretty low, and what that does is two different things. It pretty much compresses your body back 
And it also gives you an opportunity to snap the bike. So <clears throat> when you drop down off the back of the bike, it automatically lowers the front down. And as you do your pedal kick here, you pull the bike up like this. And so like, if your front wheel is low, you've got all kinds of room to move. If your front wheel is here, you only got this much room to move. So you want to keep that front wheel pretty low so you have as much snap as possible. That's the number one thing. And by crouching down on the back of the bike, you're actually basically setting up because as you crouch down, your pedals rock back just a little bit. You're kind of uh, pulling back the slingshot as it were. And so those things kind of come back together. And uh, we talk about it like, like opening a book and then then you do the big snap. So uh, that's the main thing when it comes to pedal kick gaps. Now, if you're doing a rolling gap where you're doing, we call it a three pedal, where you're doing a couple spins that are, uh, into it, like I'll start with my opposite foot forward and then go into it like this. The same thing applies where you wanna keep your front wheel super low so you can do that big snap and that's what shoots your back wheel out as far as possible. Allow me to demonstrate. I'm feeling a little like clumsy today. I don't know what the deal is. front wheel as low as I possibly can. I'm going to be over the back of the bike, which is going to set my pedals up, and then I'm going to snap. And when I snap, my front wheel is going to come up, and I'm going to pedal kick, and that's what's going to send me where I want to go. And so much of gaps is just perfecting that movement, the drop the front wheel and snap. Liam, this, is a, this will be a game changer if you can get your front wheel down a little bit lower. Yeah, so one thing you can do practice this if you can find a way to do it. The one thing you can do is just work on your drops the same exact way just to get comfortable with the idea. So you get to the edge. And just worry about dropping the front wheel and then instead of doing the pedal kick you just let go and that's how you drop back down but <clears throat> the the act of dropping the front wheel is really about having the biggest snap possible so that when you push the pedals you're pulling the handlebars toward you and that's what gets that whole whew. and then of course you get stronger at pedal kicks and you get farther which is why why I'm doing squats three times a week now. <laughs> Let me show you the rolling version of it. <laughs> Wait, you think that dropping off the the drop with the, I mean, I don't know how else you would practice getting your front wheel lower. Like it's taking away a step of, of uh, consequence. If you're trying to get your front wheel lower, I mean, you don't have to practice it on a two foot box. You can practice it on a curb. All I'm saying is work 
work out a way to drop your front wheel as low as possible. Like, okay, fine, don't do it on a, on something this tall, but do it on a curb. Because what you're trying to do is figure out how do I drop my front wheel lower than I've been dropping it, but without having to gap immediately after it. So for me, I'm just saying remove a step, remove a layer of the whole thing, and just work on jumping to back wheel and lowering your, uh, your front, front tire. True. True, it does require more precision. But also, I mean, a gap requires precision too. If you're taking off, you know, not in the right place, that's gonna have a huge impact. Just saying. All right, let's do a, let's do a rolling gap. So this one is basically a wheelie hop, but I'll try to keep the front wheel as a... <laughs> Rodrigo, I'm trying. <laughs> What's good, boss? Yeah, I no J Bang. I get what, I get what you mean, David. What's good, <clears throat> Rodrigo? I swear I'm trying. I swear I'm trying. <laughs> all right, all right. Here we go. Damon, I was just saying that uh, that yesterday was day two of, of my uh, my lifting schedule, and I actually feel better today than I did yesterday before the lift. So there's some kind of magic happening there. Okay, so rolling gaps we're talking about, <clears throat> we're going to be pedaling into it and look, I'm going to have my front wheel pretty low in the exact same way we talked about doing the gaps where we pedal kick the edge, drop the front wheel and then gap. Same thing here. And this one actually, you want to practice on flat ground, but trying to keep your front wheel as level as possible before you do the snap is a really weird thing to, to pick up because you're so used to doing wheelies like this. And naturally, once you start pedaling, it's gonna come up a little bit. But the idea of being off the back of the bike so that you have enough room to do that snap is the part that takes a bit of time to learn. And again, same thing, like learn it on something small before you take it to something big. <clears throat> see if I can do this in a convincing manner. that made sense so you see like how how you're almost like off the back of the bike just letting the front wheel come up a little bit you have more room to actually do that snap and that's really like when it comes to doing gaps the thing that seems to work best for me is keeping that front wheel low <laughs> you don't uh, you don't necessarily <clears throat> you don't necessarily need to know how to bunny hop to do it, no. I mean, it wouldn't hurt, but yeah. Ben, I'm stoked, stoked to do that, man. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> you definitely don't need the bunny hop, but it's not going to hurt to be able to know how to, like, you know, be able to lift your back wheel off the ground, I guess. And that part comes from that because so much of, like, 
especially the wheelie hop, you're using your back pedal to kind of lift the back wheel up off the ground. <laughs> Damn it, stoked. <clears throat> I've been trying to figure out, so I need to, I need to lay down like what my, my PR is for side hop and gap, and I'm trying to figure out what I should measure on, if I should measure it on my comp bike, or if I should measure it on the street trials bike, because I ride the street trials bike the most, but I feel like the comp bike is going to give me my max numbers, you know? And, uh, you know, I don't know. Okay. Let me just, uh, let me just demo this, uh, wheelie gap. Um, and actually, I think I have an idea. <laughs> 52 inches up to back minimum. That would be four inches higher than that box, which, uh, Jeff Anderson went to back wheel on. So I guess it's a hundred percent possible. <laughs> I'm here for it. <laughs> Damon says it's totally possible, so that's why we're doing this. That's why we're working together. I'm gonna have all the, all the, yeah. This is, yeah. And there's not really any sort of run. So, so basically from where I'm standing to, to where the box is, is maybe a bike length and a half. Well, I've got a pretty wide angle lens happening here. You can see like how giant and whatever. So he got like, a pedal stroke and a half in before he went up to back on that. It was super impressive. <laughs> oh, let me, hold on a second. Okay, so I want to show you guys, uh, I was talking about wheelie gra gaps and drops and stuff, and I want to show you this basic way to do it on just flat box like this. So you could actually learn, you could actually learn the wheelie gap like we were talking about here on flat ground. Actually, I could demo that really quick. I feel like I learned almost everything in trials on on flat ground, which is kind of silly, but uh, it works because there's basically you take everything else away and just focus in on the technique, and you just focus in on what you're doing, and you don't necessarily need anything. And uh, Jeff Lenowski used to make fun of me because I would ride and bunny hop on flat and like not onto anything or over anything, but I just kept doing that over and over. He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you just bunny hopping into thin air? And for me, it was all about only focusing in on the technique and only focusing on what my bike and body was and completely removing all the obstacles. So the way that I love teaching trials specifically is how to take all those things away and only focus in on the technique. And once you get that locked in, then you've got, uh, then you can apply it to this obstacle, that obstacle, that obstacle. So especially wheelie gaps, I think is one of the first things I actually learned. And uh, it's just as simple as like a three pedal. And as your top foot comes back around, you give it a little bit of a hop. So you start with your opposite foot on the, on the very top here, and then you just give it a nice big rotation. Pick a location that you want to jump from, and, uh, and kind of time it out so that pedal timing kind of comes into play too. But it's a great way to practice doing that wheelie gap motion, keeping your front wheel super, super low. And so I'm practicing here being low and kind of off the back of the bike as I'm pedaling. It's a weird motion because normally when you do a wheelie, you're like up here or standing up or whatever. And I'm trying really hard to be low and back so I can keep that front wheel as low as possible so that I've got a proper snap. So instead of just doing wheelie gaps, Practice it 
with the intention of keeping your front wheel super, super low. Feels kind of weird. Yeah. Uh, Damon, I'm live for another 30 minutes. We normally go like an hour every Tuesday and Thursday. And the whole point of doing this is just to, to add more value to the, the tutorials that are on this channel. It's just a matter of like answering those questions or those little tweaks, that nuance in the riding, just trying to give as much additional information. Because there's always like as you learn stuff, like a 12 minute video will never do it entirely, you know? Yeah, it's super hard to, because you're, when you pedal and you lean back, you almost have to disconnect your legs from the rest of your core because it's like your, your pedals are doing one thing and you're trying to keep your body steady. But it's super, yeah, it's totally counterintuitive. <clears throat> this one takes a long time to get right, but this is the one thing you can practice that will actually help you get wheelie gaps to work and to get actual distance doing it. If you just have your front wheel come up, you'll never get any proper distance on it. So this is the one, the one element. <coughs> besides, let's good ride alongside. Um, so besides track stands, Oh, there's a lot of stuff, but first I would probably take track stands to the next level. So I'd work on front and back wheel lift and then uh, moving them in place. So it's kind of like taking track stands to another level. So you've got your track stand that you're doing, right? And then you work on pivoting on your back wheel to move your front wheel around. So I'd do like hop a couple times this way and then hop a couple times back the other way like this. That's probably what I'd start with next after track stands. And you can do it out of a track stand like you just saw. So you're in a track stand doing this. <clears throat> There's a full tutorial for this on the channel too if you want like an even deeper dive into it. And then the next thing I would work on after I get the front wheel going, I'd start working on the back wheel. And you can do the same thing from a track stand. So for trail riding specifically, this is going to allow you to have better wheel placement as you're riding through technical sections because you can pretty much just put your back wheel wherever you want it to be and you can move your front wheel around super easy and then you don't even need the traction anymore. Go like this. And then after that I'd probably work on riding up on stuff. And I would take that front wheel movement and back wheel movement and increase the amount that I could move the tires around. Yeah. Yeah, J Bang, that's a great that's a great point. It's almost nothing to do with wheelies, it's just sort of the easiest way. We actually used to call it the uh, we actually used to call it the three pedal gap, so not even call it wheelie gap, but three pedal because you basically start with your strong foot to get momentum. Your opposite foot raises the front wheel off the ground, and then when your strong foot comes around, that's what shoots you across the gap, and so that's the three pedal. But if I say three pedal, it doesn't mean anything to anybody who's just starting out. So wheelie makes sense because you're pedaling to lift up the front wheel and then going for it. <clears throat> but yeah, same thing for, uh, for pedal ups on stuff. I like to keep the front wheel low as I'm going into that stuff too because it gives me that extra snap. And instead of jumping forward, yeah, you're jumping kind of straight up. But the, low, the lower you uh, keep that front wheel, the more snap you have to make it happen. And then when you're going up to back wheel, it's more about pulling the bike in, in, like up into you and then pushing it out front. So it's like this kind of motion. <laughs> Liam, it's definitely, a, it's definitely a weird feeling at first. And, and feeling how you disconnect your legs with fr from your front wheel 
to keep the front wheel low while your legs are still doing that wheelie motion, that takes the most coordination to get started. But once you get it, it's all good. Other thing you could do, so one of the things when it comes to gap, and I talked about this a little bit before, but you could find a small obstacle and practice like wheelie pedal off. You could work on gapping off of this stuff. So I think one of the big things that I try to do too, again, like it all comes down to removing as much stuff as you can out of the way. But eventually you have to practice with the edge of something so that you can gap from it. And so Specifically, you know, this box is basically meant to look like a curb or be the same height as a curb or whatever. And uh, so you can use this to practice getting ready for gaps and actually gap off the box just down onto flat ground. Again, like remove as much consequence as you possibly can until you have it totally locked in and then take it to something else. So you could, you could do your three pedal off here, you could do your pedal kick off there, even just you know, there's the drop version and then there's the gap version off too. <clears throat> so for this one, because I only have a wheelbase, I've got to start with my weak foot on top. I won't have that first one. That was basically like what competitions taught me was having one less pedal stroke but still having to do the same move. <laughs> that was always it. They always try to take one element away from you. wheel swaps a bit. <laughs> That's another way to practice keeping your front wheel low on wheelies. You know how we do like a regular pedal kick drop and put our front wheel down as low as possible so we can land smooth? You can do the exact same thing with like a wheelie off. I'm kind of feeling this red helmet actually. I bought it just for the Mario thing and now I'm kind of like, that'd be my favorite one. Thanks, David. You know, a couple, uh, couple tricks I've picked up over here. 25 years. It's crazy to think that we've been riding for as long as we have. <clears throat> so Actually, um, I feel like the, uh, I feel like that back that back wheel spinning thing is a something I picked up from Chris Santos. He was this Brazilian rider that came over to the States in the late 90s. And uh, he ended up living really close to me. So we would do road trips and stuff and ride together. 
and he would always jump up to stuff. And the thing that he taught me more than anything was just to not grab your brakes when you ride onto things. A, because it makes it, uh, it makes it, um, you can actually jump higher because your wheel will actually roll. But then it also makes it look smooth because you're not cramming your brake right away. And I think, uh, I think that made such a huge impact on me. So now I'd like hardly use my back brake until, unless I absolutely need it, you know? But uh, it feels good to like throw in a couple style elements every now and then. Still got it a little bit. <clears throat> Dabble, what was the, what was your first trials bike in 1994? Was it, what did they have at that point? They would have had GT team trials. They would have had a Monty, they would have had Magamo, there would have been that Ross trials bike, then Mark Brooks rode. Ross. Dude, I wanted one of those so bad, I had it cut out on my wall. And, uh, and then, then I like, then I found out about the GT team trials, and then right after I bought the GT, I, I learned about Monty. Like, I had no idea that Monty existed the entire time that I wanted a trials bike because the internet didn't exist. And so all I had was Hans Ray videos. And I forgot where I even saw the Ross. I think it was like in a mountain bike magazine somewhere. And I was like, no way, they make bikes for this. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, wheelie gaps, easier to learn and gaps from the back wheel. It sort of depends. I think, I think they're about the same. So, the, so what makes a wheelie gap harder is that you have to have your pedal timing just right. So if you saw when I was doing just the flat ground stuff, there's like this blue piece of tape on the ground here. And I was using that as my takeoff point when I was doing it. So a wheelie gap, the way you can mess up is by not having your pedals in the right place when you get to the ledge. Uh, a, a pedal kick gap, you pretty much just need really great back wheel balance so that you're not falling to the side when you do that pedal kick, you know? <clears throat> um, so yeah, it really kind of depends on like what you're, what you're feeling the most confident at. I feel like I actually have the most control when I'm doing a pedal kick gap because, <clears throat> sorry, um, when I'm doing a pedal kick gap, I'm stationary, I have no momentum, and I'm just doing this big motion, and it's like one and done. Whereas when I'm doing a wheelie gap, if my pedal timing is off, or if I get a little bit off balance while I'm doing this pedal, it just, there's more stuff that I feel like can, can go wrong, you know? <clears throat> oh yeah, Liam, you're off to a good one. Two weeks and you're already doing pedal kick gaps, you're good. It took me like a year to even get on the back wheel when I first started. Then again, the internet didn't exist, so I was just trying to figure it out. <laughs> Caden, uh, best trials bike to start with? Man, there are, uh, there are a lot of different options that you could have. So, um, so like a lot of people start on cross country or, or like dual slalom bikes, dirt jumpers and stuff. So like a kind of retrofitted bike to get the job done. If you wanted to get the easiest possible way, but you're okay to spend money, a mod bike would probably do it. Like Jitsi makes a good mod bike. Um, there's a bunch of Comus makes a good mod bike. A 20 inch bike where you have like complete control over the bike and it's got really fat tires and everything. Probably a great place to start. If you're already doing kind of like a BMX background, kind of doing manuals and bunny hops and stuff, maybe any kind of 24 inch wheel bike would be a good start. So like Inspired, TMS, uh, Extension, those would be good. It just kind of depends on your riding background too. <coughs> For me, I grew up on mountain bikes. So riding, um, riding, I, I just stuck with 26s. I, I did ride mod for quite a while just because it was the most fun. And it had a bash guard on the bottom that you could actually land on. But uh, yeah, any of the inspired bikes, pretty hard to go wrong. Oh, 
Oh yeah. So mountain biking, I would probably switch to either get your hands on a dual slalom bike that you can uh, that you can just modify with like a rigid fork and maybe a, a bash ring. Wolf Tooth makes a good one that will actually switch you over where you can have all the same gearing that you already have on your mountain bike. It just covers up the outside ring basically. That's the easiest way. If you want to like fully go for it, get yourself this bike right here. <clears throat> this is the Inspired Hex. And this is the bike that I ride the most. It's 26 inch wheel, rigid everything, the right gear ratio, right geometry. Until we get our tie bike in a couple weeks, this is the go-to. <laughs> I can't wait for that tie bike to come through. <clears throat> There was, a, there was an email chain in our Discord where uh, somebody emailed Inspired about like other frame materials and <clears throat> they told them that they were working on carbon bikes but they hadn't considered tie bikes so uh, we're going to make one of those in the next, hopefully in the next two weeks. We might actually do one of these live streams from the place that they're making it. Um, we'll see. We'll see how the internet is there. But it's inside the Chris King factory which is kind of dope. Martin, yeah, uh, 26 inch. We're gonna make it basically the hex, but it'll have a slightly steeper head angle and it'll have a slightly longer top tube, so the wheelbase will stay the same. It's just gonna give me a little bit more room to move around. Everything else, like I was gonna mess with the, I was gonna mess with the bottom bracket and I decided not to. Thought maybe go a little bit higher, but yeah. I feel like, yeah. Which one? This one? Maybe. That box is real squirrely. <laughs> I think it's doable though. It's not much further than a wheelbase. <laughs> Slightly wobbly. <laughs> so that box I made so it would be super, super light so it doesn't have basically anything on two of the sides. <coughs> I need to shore it up a little bit and then I think we could definitely do it. Especially with that much of a drop, I think no problem. We'll shore this buddy up and then we'll get it done. Add a, add a wall or two to it. <laughs> now I'm gonna need that box a bit more. Yeah, it's probably fine. I'm just not trying to find out all alone in a warehouse at 6.50 in the morning. <laughs> I think, uh,
Let's do it this way. I'll just push it back a little bit until we get it right. <laughs> Let me just start here, we'll push it back. See how it goes. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> Then I would say I would say whatever whatever you feel most confident with. I think probably pedal kick gap is better to start with. Um, just because you have a little bit more control. I think. There you go. Same distance with less of a drop. Yes. <laughs> Just out of curiosity. Eighty-two. Oh. That's still uh, <laughs> that's still six inches shorter than my flat to flat PR. <clears throat> but. Got to do it. When coach asks, it's got to happen. <laughs> that actually felt really good. I felt like, uh, I feel like normally when I'm getting past seven feet in distance, I'm pushing the bike out. That one, I felt like I came down on top of it. Like I had it no problem. That's all due definitely to the, uh, my new, my new program which you guys should check out actually. Truthfully, like for the winter, not being able to ride as much as most people would normally be able to ride, having a good like gym plan is not the worst idea because you'll just be stronger when you're able to ride outside again. You gotta hit up Damon. I'll put the link in my, uh, I'll put it in my uh, stories on Instagram today, but I think he still has a couple of spots left, but. <coughs> Roto Loomer, I'm in the P I'm in the Northwest. I live in Portland. If you're here in Portland, you should come ride this, <laughs> please. <laughs> I'm just solo riding in here all the time. I'll gladly take anybody that wants to come ride in Portland. <clears throat> and not saying that you can't ride mountain bikes all year. It's just kind of a pain in the butt to ride, uh, ride trials on super wet, muddy stuff.
push themselves away from the edge. Affinity, do you mean... Uh, Oh, I think I know what you mean, where, where they're like leaned out in front of the bike as they're kind of exploding out on the gap. Is that kind of what you mean? <clears throat> Corva, I got you. All right, let me move this slightly. Think, uh, I think I do that same motion, but it has to be like bigger and bigger gaps to be able to do that. Hair rolls down a bit. Oh, like, uh, like they're right on the edge. Kind of like here. I'm pretty sure Damon, who's in the chat right now, can gap farther than Jack Carthy. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. So that's what I'm after. That's what I'm trying to get. Um, I don't have a flow inspired, I have or an inspired flow. I have a an arcade. So this is a inspired hex. And uh <clears throat> There's an arcade and a four plate right there too, which are the two 24 inch wheel bikes that they made. Um, yeah, Affinity, <clears throat> I think, uh, yeah, when you're trying to squeeze out that last little bit of a gap, then absolutely. I think I was kind of like not going all in. Um, a, because I, I was pretty confident that I had it. And then B, Yes, like uh, the way that I hopped up to the back wheel, I didn't do a lot of hops to get my wheel placement right. I just took off from wherever I took off. Honestly, I was just being lazy. <laughs> oh, sweet, right on. Yeah, Flow Inspired are uh, a great, great bike. Great, uh, actually, um, Kylie, who I ride with sometimes in here, has an uh, a Flow. It's a great bike to start with. Liam, three things I don't like. Um, yeah, affinity, I would probably, like, absolutely, if you're trying to get an extra inch or two out of a gap, um, is, uh, that would help you get there, but you can get, you know, like, I would practice the move just a little bit back and then start inching your way toward that corner. It's only going to give you that extra last couple inches. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Dabble's right. So trials not being popular enough. Uh, probably number number one, but we're working on that actively, actively working on that, and hopefully we'll have some news here in the next week or two. And then uh, I think related, and and also what we're trying to do is that like the global community of riders isn't necessarily uh, connected that well, and I think that's uh, that's something that I also want to try to change, like just to bring everybody together into like one crew where there's like big pockets of riders here and there and you know there's like street trials riders over here and uh and comp riders over here like i just want it's such a small crew we should all just get together and rally around stuff as opposed to like everybody kind of being on their own but that's also kind of the nature of trials is like you have to spend so much time alone practicing and practicing and practicing inside your head and and just off on your own that by the time you actually get to ride around other people, it's like, you know? Um, and then, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I would say <laughs> shindigs as in the painful thing, not and obviously the podcast is great, but, uh, the actual act of smashing your shins with pedals, <laughs> um, not my favorite. <laughs> What's good, Mark? Um, oh, the question was how many trial bikes do I have? Uh, 
One, two, okay, wait, but time out, because we have three bikes in here that we're testing right now. So we have an extension, an arcade, and a TMS. So that sort of inflates the, the number, but one, two, three, four, five, six, we have seven trials bikes in this place right here. I own uh, three of them. <laughs> I have, yeah, three trials bikes, two 20, 26 inch bikes, a comp bike and a street bike, and then a 24 inch street bike. But honestly, like I would probably, I would probably sell the foreplay if, if the timing was right or if somebody needed one or whatever, but I just, it's been just kind of sitting, um, kind of as a backup bike. It's weird to go between 24 and 26, so I'll tell you that. And truthfully, I wouldn't mind refreshing the, uh, the 26 inch comp bike. That one's been around for a while. Oh, I definitely know what Anza is. Anza did so much, I think, for the sport to just get more people on, on trials bikes. And that's like, again, going back to what we were talking about. <clears throat> oh, I do like 20 inch bikes. I've had, uh, I've had two 20 inch bikes in the last two years. Uh, I had that Jitsi mod bike and then I had the clean mod bike, but I got nervous with the clean that I was gonna break it. Um, I, I actually grew up riding I rode both 20 and 26, but I loved my mod bike. Always loved 20 inch. But you know, like for, for what we're trying to do with this channel to try to help everybody, if they're coming from a mountain bike background and are interested in the trials or most people getting into trials now, it feels like, uh, that's actually not a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, well, I actually just put in a new order for merch cause I'm doing a new, uh, I got like a new design. So, uh, that could be, that could be a way to do it. A little giveaway. Give away the inspired foreplay. You'd have to buy a lot of merch to make that balance out though. Stoked. Mountain Biker, thanks for being here. It's so rad when people pop in and say, hey, that's like totally makes my day. <clears throat> um, I would say for Foot Jam Tail Whips, if you haven't seen it already, there's a channel called The Useless Trials, and he hasn't posted in like a year and change, but he has a really amazing foot jam tail up tutorial that is 100% worth watching. I've actually learned quite a bit from that guy's stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm actually kind of bummed that he's not doing uh, videos anymore, but yeah, he's got some really, really good stuff. All right, I got to, uh... <laughs> Corva, I'm down, let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, yeah, go check out the useless trials. Like, you know, there are not a lot of tutorial channels for trials on the internet, but that is one that's worth checking out. In addition to Super Rider, of course. Yeah, Max Rules. He's amazing. I wish that he was still making videos, and I'm, I'm not really sure why not, but uh, I would love it if he came back, because I thought he was doing a lot of really good stuff. Yeah, yeah, definitely check that one out. He goes really, really deep into it. You'll have this in no time. Awesome. Well, uh, oh, is he doing? Okay, sweet. I gotta, I gotta find whatever he's doing because, uh, yeah, big fan. He helped me out a lot. Like just, you know, whatever. Uh, Rad. I gotta go to work. But uh, thank you guys for for being here. This is a super fun stream. Stoked to see some uh, some new faces in here. It was, made it really fun. So. Thanks guys, have a good one, and uh, we'll see you, we'll be back here on Tuesday with another live stream. Have a good one.